Are you ready? So I'm Richard Roth with A. N. Roth Company, and what I have behind me is what we call a hydronic system. So this particular hydronic system will serve several functions. Its primary purpose was originally to do snow melt. So in a snow melt system, we have a sensor in the driveway. It is looking at temperature and moisture. If it senses low enough temp and, a, and, and moisture, it will bring these boilers on to heat that slab up to melt the snow as it falls. Since we don't have a huge need for that here in Louisville, Kentucky, we'll multitask these boilers. So the other thing that we are doing with this system is we are providing domestic water heating to the house. So the tank is not here yet, but there will be a 119 gallon indirect tank. When we say indirect, it is a big tank that will hold all your domestic hot water. Uh, but it has a stainless steel heat exchanger in it. So the boiler water doesn't ever mix with the house water. And with just one of these boilers in a 119 gallon tank, you can produce about 400 gallons of hot water an hour. So once again, it's a very efficient way to heat water. And in a large home, it gives you pretty much endless capacity. The third thing we are doing with this setup is we are actually gonna do some uh, radiant floor heating. So in the master bath, uh, master closets, and then like a sunroom area, we are, are going to, we, we have tubing that is installed underneath the floor, and then we use what's called a heat transfer plate. Uh, it's an aluminum plate that allows that, that heat, uh, that, that heated tube to dissipate the, the, the heat evenly across the subfloor. And then we have insulation so we can uh, direct and drive that heat through the floor. We'll have a few zones of that, and then there's actually, an outdoor heated zone as well, where the, the client will be able to enclose their outdoor patio living space and we'll be able to heat that area with this system. And then lastly, this house is going to have geothermal heat pumps. And traditionally, a geothermal heat pump would have an electric strip heater in it for supplemental heat. So when, when it's just too cold and the geo cannot produce enough heat to heat the house, you'll use an electric heating element to supplement that deficit. The problem with that is, is that where a geothermal unit is about 400% efficient, electric heating elements 100%. So dollars per BTU generated is very expensive. So since we have all this energy here and we have the ability to distribute the water through the system or the fluid, uh, we are gonna put hot water coils on top of each geothermal unit. So we will utilize these high efficiency boilers if there's a situation where the geothermal units can't heat the house on their own. What you see behind me is three modulating boilers. Those boilers get tied together uh, with a communication cable so they know which one's first, second, third, and they all kind of work together. Uh, next, you see the circulators that come on as needed to circulate fluid through the boilers and then sends that fluid back out to the system or our heating uh, uh, loads. This is a big variable speed pump. So this pump will ramp up and down as valves open to maintain a constant pressure in the system, to maintain a constant flow. Uh, this is an air separator. So when you first commission a system, there's always gonna be a little air. Uh, our Louisville Water Company actually aerates our water because it tastes better. So when you first start a system up, this guy is actually called a micro bubbler and it basically has a little screen in there. So as the fluid comes through here, it's a bigger chamber. It allows the water, the fluid to slow down and those, those air bubbles will grab onto it and float up to the top. And then this is kind of, this has got a little float in it. So as air fills up, the float drops and it opens a little Schrader valve that allows the air to come out. Below that, this is kind of what we call the trim of the, the, the boiler, if you will. You have a auto fill valve. So normally the system would be hooked to your domestic water that would be running anywhere, you know, 50 PSI or higher. You don't want 50 PSI or you don't need 50 PSI in a, in a hydronic system. So this allows you to, to maintain a lower pressure off that, that makeup water. So this usually be set at 12. This is a backflow preventer, so none of the fluid in our system is going to go back into the city. And then down here is where the expansion tank would be located. So an expansion tank is nothing more than a tank with a rubber diaphragm in it that has air pressure on one side of it. 
the opposite side of the system. So as you heat water up, fluids, they expand. And as they expand and they don't have anywhere to go, they will increase the pressure in the system, which will cause the pop-offs and the safeties to, to blow water onto the floor. So that pressure, the, the, the tank that gets mounted here, is charged to the same pressure that you want the system to operate at. So as that fluid heats up, it allows that fluid to push down on that diaphragm and gives it a place to go when it's heating. Um, other than that, we have our control valves. So these valves correspond to either a snow melt zone or a radiant floor zone or the domestic water or a air handler. So that's really it. It looks really complicated. In essence, it, it, it's not that complicated because all we're really doing is having a thermostat. And if that thermostat says, I want something, there's just a relay in here that turns this pump on and sends a signal to that boiler to start producing heat. And that's really all you need.